Greetings, this is Dr. Robert Gish. I'll be talking today about TIPS shunts, transjugular intrahepatic portal systemic shunts. Your provider may have advised you to have one of these shunts for either internal bleeding or ascites. This is used in people with cirrhosis typically. And let's go into some detail about this important device. The TIPS is used when people have bleeding from varices, either in their esophagus, stomach, or maybe in other parts of their intestines. Varices are dilated veins that are typically seen in patients with cirrhosis. Ascites, this is a fluid collection in the abdomen, again, typically in patients who have cirrhosis, but ascites may be from other causes of portal hypertension. But the TIPS is not gonna be useful unless there is enough pressure buildup in the liver that decompression would be useful. Typically this is in cirrhosis, but there are other causes of a pressure buildup that we call non-cirrhotic portal hypertension where a TIPS may have utility. The liver is in the right upper abdomen, underneath the rib cage, next to the gallbladder, spleen, stomach, and pancreas. A bigger picture of the liver. You can see the portal vein going into the liver. Then there's veins that leave the liver back to what's called the inferior vena cava. This is where esophageal varices, this is where stomach varices occur and where the tips may be useful. We'll walk you through some more important parts of this important device and its use. The liver has a dual blood supply portal vein comes in, eventually hooks up at the hepatic vein and goes back to the heart through these various routes. Again shown here, blood comes into the portal vein, back through the hepatic vein, through these various routes. Important to know this anatomy as we get into the detail of the TIPS shunt. Normal liver after a liver transplant. As you can see, there's no dilated veins anywhere here. Again, portal vein connected to hepatic veins through these various segments where blood flow would take place and where you may consider putting a, in a stent to enhance that blood flow if there's blockage. Normal liver has all these blood vessels but no scar tissue. Here's cirrhosis, extensive scar tissue. You can imagine how it would be very difficult for blood to get through those vessels through that liver. Another picture of cirrhosis, lumpy, bumpy, shrunken, dilated veins you can see here. These are varices on the top of the liver. Another picture of cirrhosis, portal vein, blood flow, can't get through, it's blocked. The blood backs up, goes to the uh, upper part of the stomach, into the esophagus, get dilated veins in each of these areas, dilated splenic vein, large spleen also can be there. Rupture of bleeding vessels can occur in many of these different areas. If you put a stent through here, you open this up, you get a big vessel that's here Blood can come through and decompress these other areas where congestion may exist. Tip shunt would go through this vein, through the liver, down to the portal vein, decompressing all of these blood vessels, decreasing their risk of rupture or bleeding. Again, liver, there's all these different veins. You bypass that liver, putting a stent into that portal vein decreasing the size of other veins, organs in the abdomen. Esophageal varices, small and big, compared to a normal esophagus. These veins can cause internal bleeding. They may pass that blood out in their stools or vomit blood as part of a complication of cirrhosis. Ascites, fluid collection on the belly can also be a complication of this block flow through the liver. MELD score is very important because if the MELD score is greater than 23, 
or the bilirubin is greater than two to three, do not do a TIPS. Those patients would have a very high mortality risk. So the MELD score is used for allocating organs for transplant. It's used to define how much of a risk somebody has of dying in the next three months to a year. But here it's very useful. And the original design of the MELD score was to decide who would live and who would potentially die after a TIPS shunt. MELD score, important. Asterixis. After a TIPS shunt, we bypass the liver. Toxins can get through and can cause encephalopathy and active flapping. You must give your patient informed consent or you as a patient must know about this risk. The TIPS is put in just like we do a transjugular biopsy. We go in through the neck vein, in through the back of the liver, and then down into the portal vein under guidance. Better diagram, neck's up here, catheter comes down through and alongside the heart, goes into the hepatic vein, the stent crosses that bridge between the hepatic vein and portal vein. Blood flow then is allowed to go through that up through the liver, decompressing these other veins and decreasing the size of varices throughout the abdomen. Step by step, catheter comes in through the neck, a probe goes across from hepatic vein into portal vein, wire is then placed further down into the portal vein, a balloon comes in and dilates, over the balloon the stent is released, all of the equipment is removed, and blood flow follows. After a TIPS, observed for liver failure, leading into the abdominal cavity, mental confusion, or infection in the bloodstream. These are the major risks, although they're very small in expert hands. Serious complications occur in less than one to three per hundred TIPS shunts. TIPS, in summary, is useful for GI bleeding in patients with portal Hypertension, typically due to patients who have cirrhosis, ascites, didn't talk about that as much today, but by decreasing this pressure, ascites can be better controlled. Thank you very much.